His name... Lion. What's going on, knights, lords, ladies, sorcerers, enchantresses, and all mystical beings filled in the land of Ambion. Welcome to part one of part three of the Merlin Weekly, where it's a special time where we're covering the episodes where Gwen is an ungrateful bitch turned traitor. I'm sorry, I'm a little angry with these three episodes because the first one I had to watch made me want to punch something. I punched my support beam. My hands hurt. Anyway, episode seven, A Lesson in Vengeance. It's plot synopsis for you guys that want to watch the episode before you hear me do this whole riffity riff riff. It's the events after the Dark Tower, I would say maybe a couple of weeks or days or time is very inconsistent in the land of Merlin. And Gwen is trying to do her best to kill her husband on the behest of Morgana. For what reason? We will never truly know until episodes 8 and 9 to clarify everything. But we then have to just sit through the longest charade of assassination attempts to then go with the red herring to the characters, not the audience, of who done did it. And that's the plot synopsis. If you guys want to watch the episode now, I suggest that you pause this video, go watch it on DVD, on Netflix, wherever you want to see it, and then come back here. If you guys are going to stick around for the whole episode, man, am I really, really, really feeling like these characters need a different sort of set of skills, because thinking is not one of them. Bumbling around, yes. Fighting stuff, yes. Using magic, yes. Defying the rules of nature to bring back people from death's door. Yes. Thinking? No. God, no. Like, it, it's amazing how many times Camelot has not been reduced to a pile of rubble. If this were the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Camelot would have been destroyed seven times over by just getting caught in the vicinity of a Marvel villain. Like, not even top tier like Loki or or Thanos, or any of those, even if they bring in Galactus into the cinematic universe. I mean, like, low tier, like, Ze like Zemos, Zemos, Zemo, the guy from Civil War, or keeping it even lower tier with the TV series, Kilgrave. Those two would have wiped it out seven times over on, like, a whole strip of just walking around because they're just so goddamn dumb. Why am I saying this? Because the first assassination attempt comes from the snapping of Arthur's saddle to then get ambushed by some marauding bandits that just happened to know where they were going in a stead where the only three people that knew were Merlin, Arthur, and Gwen, and they decided to suspect the guy that tends the horses of Tyr... Seward. Se is that word? I don't know how to pronounce these names. And it's just like, okay, um, breaking the thing on the saddle, yeah, maybe it was just like some faulty work there, but shouldn't we be more focused on who knew the route that was being taken? Like, if Gwen was trying to tell something, and Merlin's just trying to organize stuff, and Arthur is just trying to be the good husband, shouldn't we just put two and two together to find out who did that? No, we're just going to su suspect the guy that just tends to the horses and just fixes up the sat. Okay, okay. Just going to ignore the bandit attack altogether and just focus on the saddle. That's the most important part of the evidence. Genius. Then the second assassination attempt comes courtesy of Morgana with poisoning, where after they tie up the loose ends of killing Tyr because they threatened his mother, they're now just like, Okay, we now need to have a patsy. Who can we have as the patsy? Oh, I know. Why don't you poison your husband for a dinner date? Then we just make Merlin, one that has a lot of alibis because he's around many different witnesses, and this whole thing will just be swept under the rug because of how stupid this plan is, be the patsy, where everything will just end up with Merlin saving the day because we're fucking stupid. But no one's going to suspect anything because Camelot's 
collective IQ is around 20. I'm not even joking. That's literally the whole plan. Make Merlin the Patsy after killing Tyr, after they threatened him, by using poison, and then making him the person that's now the Patsy. It's like, let's see, should we get witnesses, make an actual court hearing about this? Because we are in a rule of just law now, and I don't think Arthur would appreciate us just going to wild accusations, because he himself doesn't like wild accusations. He wants to hear confessions, actually get witnesses, and do such things as they proceed. But no, no, it's just, let's lock up Merlin. I mean, sure, we get the awesomeness of old man Merlin come back out of nowhere and get to see that Merlin's healing magic is kind of top tier. But in all honesty, from just this, it's like, I know they want to write the ending to the season. I know they do. I know they're just trying to wrap up the whole series as a whole to just be tied up with a bow to the most amazing series finale I've ever seen on TV for a Arthurian lore show. But God, is this writing just painful to see acted. Because everything could just be taken apart if everyone was just smart. I... I, I don't understand. I can't hate this episode because of all the good points of the action choreography, the suspense for the characters, even though we know what's actually going on. Merlin's top tier magic, as well as the return of old man Merlin, as well as the urgency to see how much the characters care about Arthur if he's on death's door, as well as how methodical Morgan is trying to go to these lengths to get her throne back by manipulating Gwen for the obvious trait of she's going to use Gwen, kill her, and then take the throne because she has bloodlines to the throne to take it by force. That whole thing, amazing. Big problem is the execution from the writing. Everything can be taken apart with logic because these characters shouldn't be this fucking stupid. Then again, in Aetherian lore, they also write that Arthur has an incest child with Morgana, as well as not knowing that Lancelot's been fucking his wife behind his back because everyone's gotta be fucking stupid in these books and these shows and these movies. No one's allowed to be smart. That's gonna change, but that's a red herring for another day. Uh... I want to say my thoughts on this one, but we have two more episodes to go over, so I will see you guys in part two.